Hello, Michael here with another RenderMan tutorial. Today we're having a look at how to render a rusty pole with some paint on top of it. And I'm doing this based on some reference that I took when I was in New York recently. Um, so we've got this pole here, it's got some blue paint on it which is sort of peeling away in parts to expose a rusty metal underneath. Um, so this is going to be sort of complex, so if you're sort of new to Render Man, this might be difficult to follow, um, but I'm going to go through it step by step, so hopefully everyone can have a go at it. So I've already set up a scene here, I've got a um, post here that I've created, um, it is 4x20x4 four by by four if you want to create the same size thing. I recommend making a slightly bigger one, um, because we're going to be working with procedurals here, they're uh, world based in uh, size so it's all the all the texture size is going to be relative so if you've got a bigger pole it's going to um, have more detail in comparison to the size of the textures that are being generated I've also got a couple of lights here I've got a um, key light here on the left which is just a small um, square light with an intensity of 100 and exposure of 2.5 and then we've just got a um, uh, bounce light here which is just an intensity of one it's fairly large and at render it looks like that. So you can see I've just got the key light there which should give us some um, nice highlights. Make sure that your key light's pretty small so you can get some detail in the shadows. Okay, so we're gonna apply a uh, layer surface. Now make sure you do the uh, layer surface tutorial that I've already got. They'll give you a better understanding of the basics of how the layer surface works before we dive into this one. Cause I'm not gonna explain how everything works, um, just sort of how you can set things up. So uh, select your mesh, right click on that and click a layer surface. I'm gonna jump into the hype shade editor. Clear that and just um, map out our uh, layer surface. So. We're gonna, we've got two layers here already, we're only going to be using two. I'm going to move them down a, a layer each though, so um, the top layer, or the, the bottom layer is in layer one, the top layer is in layer two. And we're going to la name these, this is going to be um, layer rust, and this one's going to be layer uh, paint. Alright, so we're going to start off with our rust layer, we're just going to hit tab and type in fractal and we'll get pixar fractal. And um, again, I've already done this, so I know what my settings are, and I'm going to use the same ones again. So you can copy these if you want. If you're using the same size mesh, you should get the same results. And this fractal is going to be driving both our bump map um, and our texture as well. And to start with, I'm just going to jump into this um, layer paint, and uh, I'm going to enable the specularity. I'm going to do that on both, so I remember. Um, and then I'm just going to give this the blue color um, of our reference, which I'm just going to pull it, color pick off screen. You shouldn't color pick, but I'm cheating. Um, if you color pick from photos, usually you won't get the, the local color as accurately. So um, a little bit of adjustment is usually necessary. And I'm going to add in a little bit of specularity and it's pretty rough and make sure the gain's at 1.0 just to adjust the amount of um, of specularity with the face color. Uh, also make sure you enable layer 2, it won't be on. And you see we've got our now blue specular paint, which is going to be our paint layer, and then we're going to add the rust in underneath that. So to do that we're going to be basing our uh, masks, our layer masks, off this one fractal for the rust. And essentially it's going to be um, a positive value for the the, the rust or a negative value depending on how you want to look at it and then the inverted value for the paint. Uh, so I'm just going to jump into the diffuse here and give this a orange color just for now so we can see the difference when we've created the mask. Um, I'm going to use a threshold node so just hit tab and type in threshold and you'll get that load um, and I'm going to run the out RGB from the fractal into the input RGB and then expand that node by hitting 3 I'm just going to use the out, uh, the result R, and I'm going to run that into the layer 1 mask. And then I'm going to hit tab and type in invert, and we're going to get a Pixar invert node. And then run the RGB into the, uh, the, the threshold RGB out into the invert, and expand that. And we're just going to run the RGB R into the layer 2 mask. So essentially what we've got happening here is this fractal, based on its values, is going to create masks. Um, which is going to create some nice blades between the paint and the rusted areas and we're going to be able to sort of harden those edges using this threshold. So um, I'm not sure what it's going to look like just now, so we'll just do a quick render. 
Yeah, all right, so it's pretty much already doing what I want it to do. What you can see is happening here is that we've got our rusted areas and we've got our paint areas and then there's a bit of transition between the two. So we can use our Pixar threshold to adjust that as necessary. So if you want a bit softer transition, sort of like if the paint was sort of wearing away as it hit the rust, then you can increase the transition width. And then if you wanted to sort of reduce the amount of paint or increase it, you can use the threshold to control that. So this is really useful um, for making edits to your overall look. It gives you a lot of control this way. So we can get it, we can get it, get it to be, you know, just a little bit of um, paint missing, or we can get it to be, you know, really badly damaged. So I'm gonna do something like this, I think. The one in the New York was um, pretty well worn. Um, so yeah, something like that I think is gonna be good. Now, to start, we're gonna use some bump maps to create some um, visual interest in the surface. Depending on how your shot is, if it's a close-up shot, probably a bump map's not gonna be good enough um, to give you enough sort of realism. Um, but uh, at, a, at a medium or a long, it's not gonna make much of a difference. You're, you're not gonna be able to tell. Um, we're, I'm also gonna cover using scalar displacement at the very end of the tutorial. Uh, but for now, we'll just use some bump maps. So I'm just gonna make those a bit smaller by hitting two on them. So let's create a bump node. So just hit tab, type in bump, and we get a Pixar bump. Now I'm going to um, run a invert node again and use the result RGB from the fractal and then run the result R into the input bump and then the result N from that bump into the bump normal. The reason I'm inverting it is because if you don't invert it, it will look like um, it will look like the rust is bumping outward and we want it to look like it's been eaten away. So uh, I'll just do a quick render there. So you can see that looks like it's been chewing away, um, which is essentially what we're after. And obviously the paint looks way too clean at the moment, um, but we'll adjust that in a second. You can also adjust the amount of bump. Um, uh, try not to overdo it. So um, sometimes less is more. Remember it's, it's paint sitting up on metal. The metal itself hasn't really been chewed away by like acid or anything like that. It's just been uh, rusted over time by oxidization. So at a value of one, it's probably eaten away a bit too much. Um, so I think I was using 0.4, which looks okay. So we'll roll with that. And I'm gonna do a little bit more work to the color in a moment, but um, for now, we'll just leave that as is. And we'll go ahead and start working on the paint. So for the, the rippling of the paint, if we just look at that um, the paint isn't really like the same as the rust the rust is sort of more fractally in my opinion and the paint is sort of like more globulous because it was a liquid at one stage so we don't want to use a fractal because fractals tend to be a little bit too hard on the edges so we're going to use a um, Voronoi's which has got a sort of a softer effect so if we type in um, noise we're going to pick our Voronoi's and once again, I've already done this, so I'm gonna use the same settings I've, as I did previously. So um, I've already got a tutorial on, on Voronoi, so if you wanna learn about that, um, check out that tutorial, but these settings will do for now. And again, we're gonna use a bump um, and run the result F into the input bump, and then select that and hit three, and result, uh, the result N into the bump for the paint layer. So now if we IPR, you'll see we get really globulous looking paint now, much too globulous at the moment. So we need to reduce our bump mapping um, uh, to something probably less than the the uh, rust. Yeah, 0.2. So it looks looks like it's got texture on it, but um, it doesn't look insane. So you can see now from like a medium shot or a long shot, um, and it looks pretty effective. Um, we're getting some nice highlights on the edges of the paint and some nice texture overall. Um, but now we want to go in and sort of start working on the color, make sure that uh, it's, it's a little bit more visually interesting because the color itself wasn't the rust. If you look at the reference, the rust has highlights of orange um, and the paint has got, um, it's got bits of the rust bleeding into it as well as sort of uh, variation um, in the color on the surface. You've got lighter parts here as well. 
Now I know I used a lot of fractals, but I like them. I'm going to create a new fractal and this is going to be um, blended with our color for the paint. Uh, I'm going to use it um, with a blend node so we can adjust the, some of the values in the color of the paint. Um, and again, I'm just going to type in some uh, values that I've already uh, uh, used. And I'm going to type, uh, create a new node, type in blend, we'll get a Pixar blend node. We're going to run the result RGB into the top RGB. And then the bottom color is going to be the blue that we selected previously. I might make that touch more saturated. Um, so you can use a bunch of different blending modes here. You could use multiply, um, dissolve, uh, darken. Uh, I'm going to use overlay because I want it to sort of create lighter parts um, rather than darker parts. Um, so we'll connect the result RGB into our diffuse color from the Pixar blend and then we'll run that IPR. So now you see we're getting like a bit of mix of the orange um, compared to this. Now if the pattern is becoming too obvious, which I think it is here, um, I'm going to run it, gra grab the um, Pixar fractal and I'm just going to reduce the frequency so the pattern is a little bit larger because if it's too fine it just it looks too obvious so I, I think something a bit subtler is probably the way to go all right so now let's do the rust so again I'm going to use a fractal I just love fractals um, I do I actually do love fractals they're very useful in so many situations just for cre creating randomization uh, so I'll just punch in those uh, values again and again, we're going to create a blend node. We're going to run the result RGB into the top. And the bottom color is going to be our orange that we used before. And then we're going to run the result RGB into the diffuse color of our layer rust. And for this blend mode, um, I'm going to use dodge, uh, color dodge rather. As you will see, we'll give some quite extreme highlights. Um, but due to that, I'm going to actually desaturate and maybe push this more into more into the uh, red. Because what I really want to hit is these highlighter yellow parts, um, which I'm getting here. And if you're finding this is too saturated for your taste, you can um, reduce the alpha effect and then push it back into the color that you prefer. But I'm just going to keep it at 1.0 because I quite like that um, that contrast of that yellow and that orange. So if you look at it close up, it's um, it's got got quite a nice effect happening. It's very similar actually to the um, the colors that I'm getting. I was getting on this reference. Now obviously there's a lot more detail in this photo than there is in this. This is why I don't re necessarily recommend uh, bump maps for close ups because um, obviously you can you, you can tell that it's fake, um, but still pretty effective. Now our rust layer doesn't currently have any specularity on it, so I'm going to add just a little bit. And make it quite rough. This is just going to help define some of the area, uh, the the edges. Now you can also use the Pixar Vora noise that you're using for your bump map, the RGB out into the specular face color for your paint. If you want to um, have a bit of randomization on the specularity, um, I think just an overall specular color is fine. You could once again adjust this with a either an exposure node or um, you could clamp it with a, um, a threshold node as well. I'm just gonna go with the overall specularity though because I think um, because we're masking it, um, it's pretty fine how it is. So um, you could also add in some diffuse roughness if you want. Um, if you want it to trap a little bit more light in the surface, uh, but I don't really think it's necessary. You could do the same with the um, the same with the rust. Uh, that will make it a little bit more uh, dark, but you might find that some of the shadow areas get a little bit uh, more occluded as well, which can look good. So yeah, um, I think if we look at the two, the reference in that, that's pretty close. Um, so yeah, um, obviously I haven't molded this exactly the same, but I think that's pretty close to being what that um, post there in the New York subway looked like. So that is how you would do it with bump maps. Now, if you are wanting a close up um, and you want to use displacements, that's a possibility as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to use scalar displacement because we've only got values between zero and one. We don't have normal values. So, um, what we'll do is we'll select our bump maps and we'll disable them. And because we've got two different layers 
uh, we've got the paint layer and we've got the uh, rust layer. I'm going to use a Pixar scalar layer, which is going to be two different. Um, it's going to make it so I can mask off the different scalar uh, areas using the, the the masks that I've created here already for the bump maps. So I'm going to create the masks first, um, and I'm going to use that uh, our rust fractal um, to do so. So uh, the first one is going to be from the Pixar threshold and that's going to be our layer 2 mask and our layer 1 mask is going to be from our invert node and I'm just going to hit tab and type in displace and get a Pixar displace node. We don't need the shading group. We run the out color into the shading group for our uh, layer mixer and then the result F into our displacement scalar input on the displace node. Um, and make sure that you've enabled both the layers that you're going to be using. So that's layer one and layer two. Now I'm going to assign the uh, displacement amounts. So the layer one um, is going to be our result F from our fractal for the rust, just into layer one displacement scalar. And then the paint displacement, which is layer two, is going to be from our Voronoise F uh, to our layer two amount. Now, if I render this, it's going to be crazy because there's a lot of displacement happening, as you can see. But um, it is functioning as we sort of want it to. We've got our uh, rust is lower than the paint. The paint is higher. And also, you can see that the edge is um, separating. That's because I haven't created a subdiv scheme, which we need to do. See that is now working correctly, and I will need to adjust this uh, so it can subdivide correctly. Which I'll so I'll just add in a couple of um, edge loops. Okay, so now that looks a little bit more like a post, a gross post. But um, so uh, we need to go into our pixel displacement scalar layer, and we're just going to adjust the displacement amounts. So you could do it with overall gain if you want, or you could do it per channel. I'm going to do it per channel. Um, I'm going to set the layer one, which is our rust, to 0.2. And uh, I'm going to set the paint to 0.3. So now it should just be sitting on top, I think. Yeah. So now we've got some actual displacement happening. Um, if we zoom in here. you can see that the paint is actually sitting over the top of the of the um, rust. Now if you want to get back some of that detail that we've lost a little bit, we can go back in and re-enable our bump maps. So now that uh, those bump maps are enabled. You can see a lot more surface variation and um, texture variation in both the, the rust and in the paint. And it's probably a bit intense at the moment. I'd probably want to go and back it off and play with it a bit. But you can see now it sort of is a lot more believable with a close up. Um, you just need to, you'd want to finesse it a lot more than I have here, obviously. But um, even at a long shot, it looks quite good. And I think if you compare that. I do say so myself to the reference that is pretty convincing so yeah uh, just the displacement amount and maybe the bump map needs to be backed off a little bit there because it looks like that rust is a bit deep in places but overall it's getting the correct effect and um, you will have yourself a very convincing rusty post or rusty anything that you want now using uh, procedurals completely so I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I actually really enjoyed um, doing this one. Um, if you found it useful, make sure you click the like button so other people can find it. And if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed as I do a couple of these sorts of tutorials every week uh, here on YouTube for products like Render Man and other CG products. If you want to stay up to date even further, check out the Facebook page, link in the description. That's it for now though. Thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.